Hello, hello everyone. I'm Parker, and today I'm going to be taking a fully original trading card game and using it to make the storyline for animated shorts. D&D for cartoon characters. And in this series, I'll be meeting with all different types of creators with stuff to share, to play games and ask questions. This is Creator Roll. Oh wait, let me start this. My voice is blown out from karaoke, but I guess that'll make it sound deeper. It all works out in the end. Today I am joined by some great voice actors I got to work with in the fan series on this channel, Adventures in Smash. Yes, it's a Smash Bros. fan fiction. First with me is Greg. Um, he played Mario. Gosh darn it! Where's Link? He had our shovel! Uh, who are you? Yeah. Why are there no windows in this room? I, I just, uh, next up in line is the person who played Pyra, um, <laughs> Spider. Hey guys, I found a shovel! Pyra, stop invalidating our efforts by taking initiative! Yeah, t today I, I want to be Spider Rat today. So Spider basically, in, in the original run of the show, only had a couple lines, but we had recorded actually hours of footage for the 10 episodes. There was a whole arc for Pyra and Mithra, and they pretty much got no lines in for the first few episodes. It's All that work for nothing. So the story of our campaign today is a 30 minute one shot, basically virtual video game characters entering a battle royale martial arts tournament in hopes to win the DLC title of a coveted Smash Bros title for Smash Bros 6. You guys wake up in a arcade booth, like you suddenly have come outside of the video games and you are in this martial arts tournament being held in the carnival. That is the setting. In order to find my next uh, pupil, I must uh, go to the box, the casino. Oh shit, I rolled a six. Uh, so you get yourself a character that is kind of just you know, a little bit of a loser, not really good at anything, but he does have motivation to get better. So you have that going for him. I have this turkey. Yeah, I think that fits perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That turkey looks too calm to be a loser. Let's Let's get someone who's sad. How about, how about the ice growl? Because the ice growl is just sort of like sulking. Oh, oh the ice growl's cute. Oh, no, bring the turkey back. <laughs> we want the turkey. You bring the, the tur turkey back. Yeah. There we go. I feel like this, this turkey's just like, yeah, I got no life goals and it feels good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's, he, he's exactly the kind of turkey that you'll catch him going on Instagram and uh, sending a good morning text to the girl that he follows that doesn't even know who he is. So I basically just go up to him and I want to just tell him like, here's the thing, you're weak right now, but I'm about to make you stronger. I want to grab him and throw him outside the window as, as, hard, as hard as I can as a way to train him to be um, stronger. <laughs> So in Jeez. other so in other words, you're just um, showing off this uh, turkey, and you're like, you see this? This is what peak male performance looks like. All right, yeah, I'm about to make him strong. Oh my gosh, I rolled a 19 <laughs> plus two with lettuce, and that's 21. Okay, you're basically gonna kill this guy. <laughs> Let's see what this guy. Oh my goodness, he rolled a three. <laughs> Greg, describe what happens when I go up to this potential pupil, and I'm like, all right, don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> Get ready. Go, how how much HP did you take from him? I took 18 oh, HP from him. Oh, so he's dead. Yeah. You you go up to this potential pupil. Uh, you know, you give him the shtick, he's like, alright, you're gonna hate me for what I'm about to do, but it's gonna make you stronger. You grab his phone, you see, you look at his phone screen, and you see him just looking at this Instagram girl, and you're just like, what the f*** is this, okay? You throw it on the ground, you take this guy, and you throw him against the window. The window gets shattered, not only is he dead, he actually is dead before he even hits <laughs> the window. So, before any physical damage is done to him, he's already dead because of the shock because he thinks to himself how could someone that i trust so much do something so horrible and the shock of that thought just causes him to instantly die my goodness that guy and then that he hits so the window <laughs> i just imagine master sweet is just going like 
oh shit, that wasn't supposed to happen just casually like steps back <laughs> like <laughs> i better call saul <laughs> So Greg, when you basically were voice acting for Mara, you, you had done nothing before. Yeah, no, that's that's correct. In some sense, like when you were getting into character playing this gruff, like bitter version of Mario, the Italian plumber, like what are some good tips you gave to yourself and something you could pass on to anyone who is also trying to really get into character as a voice actor? Um, I think that the advice that I generally tried to follow was to have fun with the character. Because if you're not having fun with the character, and I kind of knew deep down inside that I'm not the best voice actor, you know, I somehow was able to do a voice that vaguely sounded like Mario, and I was like, all right, I'm going to stick with it. I think this is good. It was your own creative take on it, and <laughs> it was entertaining. If you that's could for even sure. call it that. <laughs> His first line is, hey, fuck you, Luigi. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure that that was my idea too. Yeah, that's right. You improved that during the, the script reading, and we went with it. What was the original line? I don't even remember. You know, I don't even remember either. <laughs> and then suddenly, the roller coaster behind the Ferris wheel just splits up and morphs into this behemoth of a monster. Let me just grab like a. Uh, let me just grab the closest thing I can find to. Okay, he forms a giant hornet. Oh god, and this, this, this is the stuff where nightmares come from. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty, and this bee just starts going like, I am last year's chow. You guys are going through me. He just picks up the ferris wheel and he throws the ferris wheel. He rolls a 19 plus 2 athleticism, that's a 21, alright. <laughs> oh shit, okay. Yeah. Uh, my technique to dodge it is to... Chucky Chew Bunny is going to yell at the Ferris wheel and he's going to yell so loudly that not only is the power, like the physical power of the yell going to stop the wheel, but also his yelling will cause words, like actual words to fly out of his mouth. Like you'll see the words like fly out of his mouth and fly towards the Ferris wheel and the words will basically destroy the Ferris wheel. And by doing so, he will show the youth of this generation that reading and writing is awesome. Okay. Wait, I'm narrating, right? Uh, yeah, um, we're rolling for Chucky Chew Bunny. Mm. He rolled a 13 plus one shield, that's 14. Um, he's alive still, but uh, barely. Chucky Chew Bunny starts yelling. What he didn't uh, realize is that um, he he's starting to create this like, you know, Sonic Boom related type, type of yell actually. And he'll be yelling stuff like, yo, this Ferris wheel's like going down and like, you know, literally what he said, all these words are coming out. But he didn't expect it to be like such huge words. Like they were made out of titanium, you guys. Like it was breaking the Ferris wheel into like literally into pieces. The words that he was yelling out were like too long. He was saying words like infrastructure and <laughs> investments. Yeah, infrastructure. <laughs> Just a business meeting, just going like, uh, logic, uh, statistics, um, business. We need to expand the infrastructure beyond the initial, uh, investment opportunities. <laughs> yes, oh, all gosh. of that. Just big letters. Uh, and, and every word just stacked on that Ferris wheel to the point where it was literally crushed into pieces. Oh my goodness. Now, of course, like, you know, this, um... That would mean that Chucky Chew Bounding yelled so much that I think after all the yelling, he unfortunately lost his uh, voice. His throat is definitely ruptured. I, I think like a chunk of Ferris wheel also like, you know, landed on one of his ears and it broke, <laughs> it broke one of his ears as well. For consistency's sake, we're going to make both of them just no. squashed up. <laughs> no. Oh He's man, bald. that's... So first off, Spider, it's great to hear you from a mic that isn't a potato, like all of this was recorded on. <laughs> oh yeah, um, I gotta say, uh, I I think I thank you for the recommendations, actually. Um, gotta get well, them to sponsor this video. <laughs> <laughs> Always, And yeah. now back to our sponsors. And <laughs> now to our sponsors, you know. Basically, 
the way um, Adventure Smash was written is that it really ended up getting serious towards the end with some heavy drama. Like every episode after the unplanned finale, how did it basically feel just like you had all this lines your character went through the storyline to, oh, hey, now this will never be seen. Initially, I was looking forward to all of the 10 episodes to be like, you know, fully edited and uploaded and stuff like that. But, you know, I do understand exactly, like, you know, why it was, like, you know, cut short. I'm pretty sad about that. I am pretty happy that I got some things out of it, like, uh, more confidence to actually, like, say, like, help out on such a huge, like, you know, video project like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it really makes me feel comfortable on, like, you know, how to uh, project, like, you know, my voice, like, you know, through a microphone. Absolutely. And, like, of course, have, having lots of fun. And I'll, I'll take it as, like, a very fond memory, which it was. And yeah, it was voice recording with uh, you guys was a blast. And for those who don't know, like, I was kind of just seeing this as my swan song to animation. Like, I would do this and never really do animation again. But, you know, life is funny that way because shortly after that, I got a job at a studio. But then suddenly, I no longer had time to basically make what was ultimately a fan fiction with the PNG slides. What do you do to dodge this Ferris wheel being hurled at you at a million miles an hour? So I'm gonna use my smarts to try to locate an optimal route for me to uh, run on the Ferris wheel and like hop off. Um, I, I do wanna like land somewhere safe. If it means I have to land onto the Hornet, so be it. Alrighty. You rolled a 16 plus your two shield, that's 18. All right, here's what happens. You scurry in and you, you're you able to just navigate through, you just run through this Ferris wheel like it's the Matrix combined with Sonic the Hedgehog and you you land straight on this whatchamacallit dude. The Hornet sees you um, so and gets you in the tail. He smacks you on the tail so you take three damage from that. But because mm -hmm. you are now in close proximity to him, you can actually roll a retaliation. Yo, retaliation, but with fury swipes. Yes. All right. Let's 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 have at it. You rolled a seventeen. Okay. Basically, if he rolls a three or less, then you can actually murder this dude. Well, let's go for it. Let's see. He rolled an eighteen. Just kidding. In fact, uh, you try to attack him again, but he just swats your tail again. All right. Really, really, man, just the tail. And I just realized he has plus two athleticism, so he actually you take another three damage. So. Um, three damage twice, so that your click is at 10 HP. All right. Yeah, he 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 nearly broke my tail off. Yeah, you're just like, ow! All my right, tail. <laughs> Bro, my that's tail. my that's my that's my antenna, man. I found my pupil. <laughs> <laughs> your pupil is the Ferris wheel. My pupil is the Hornet. And I just go, the student has become the master, and I just crucifix style both my master suite's arms spread out. <laughs> I get plus one for shield just for my card alone, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, give our give our brains a break. It's like one in the morning. Yeah, I rolled the one. <laughs> <laughs> so he's dead, right? Greg, yeah. Just... All right, I'll, I'll kill you off. So he, he basically, like, you know, opens his arms, he runs towards the Hornet. As he runs towards the Hornet, he, the, the Ferris wheel is flying in the direction perpendicular to the direction he's running, and it basically just knocks him out. It's like when you, if you cross the street and you just get hit by a car. That's exactly what happened in this case, except mm -hmm. the car is the Ferris wheel. Um, he's dead. That's that. I want to get one last word. He just goes A plus. Just... <laughs> you you have done well, my students. This is what I wanted all along. Should should we continue to kill this thing? Oh wait, I I forgot. You can't hear now. Oh, I can. He can read lips. <laughs> <laughs> what did he, you he think can, I say? He, though? he he can look at people's lips, but he misinterprets everything that people says. So when you so, said so, that, yeah, well, he yeah, thought, I... uh, should we fight this guy? He read it as like, could I bite this, uh, this Could I this bite fry? these fries? <laughs> <laughs> could I bite this fry? He, and he looks down on the ground and sees like a french fry on the floor. 
And he just kind of answers like, yeah, I guess I could. And he just eats the french fry. I'm gonna roll for and... that. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's a 19. Um, <laughs> you know what? Uh, let's make this a happy ending. It turns out that was a, a, a power-up that allows insectoids to die when you snap your fingers. There we go. <laughs> oh god, we're down to see this. Yeah. <laughs> we are deus ex marketing this to end this. <laughs> You just eat the fry and out comes like this genie. <laughs> They're like, we've been trapped in that container for three centuries. We have been trapped inside of this cooked piece of potato. We give you this gift. What do you do with it? Oh, well, I mean, I think the answer is obvious. Um, I snap my fingers. Because the only other question to ask is, if you were to voice any other video game character like if someone went up to you and said like hey we are we are doing a fan series of this game and we want you to be one of the characters who would be like your dream to just voice as doom guy <laughs> does he even talk in the game nope it would make a really easy voice acting gig <laughs> If there's ever a moist critical game, I'm pretty sure yes. there is. You gotta play. You gotta play Charlie. <laughs> you, did, did you know? You know that most moist critical is a voice actor, right? For for like multiple video games. Oh, that's amazing. I could, I could totally yeah. hear it. Actually, you you and uh, most moist critical have like the same like vocal range, the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the first time I've heard that from people. Yeah, whenever I, just, I just realized. <laughs> What's whenever... up, everybody? It's critical. Uh, I think the problem is that I'm I'm not comfortable being nearly as vulgar as Moist Critical is whenever he <laughs> describes things. He's so yeah. nonchalant a lot about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, the funny part is that I don't think he even scripts any of the stuff. I think he just turns no, on his mic and he just <laughs> lets his no, he imagination. Absolutely doesn't. Yeah. I think Damn. I I don't think he scripts most of what he says. If offered the the opportunity, would you guys go into voice acting again? Like whether it was paid or free? Like obviously, I'm not going to be hosting um, voice acting sessions for a while. But you know, if someone else came along, for me, it really depends on the people that I'm working with. Like, if I generally feel like I can get along with this um, these people, and then they're willing to like you know help me out in terms of the voice acting stuff, then I'll take part of it. Um, if it's like something more of like a professional level, I don't think I have the confidence to even get to that point. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's it's just amazing like how much like good synergy with your coworkers can really just hype like a good productive or creative environment. Like Oh yeah, um, I need yeah. that. I'm actually the opposite where I would rather be have it be with people that I don't get along because that would just make it more entertaining for me. <laughs> Oh jeez! Especially if you want to start, like you know, yelling. <laughs> it's for just like a yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in for Creator Role. For more episodes with more online creators, join in for the series. There's going to be a new creator every single episode, and yeah, today was an Adventures in Smash special as well as a Dojos and Dragons special. Thanks to Cobra Kai. Great show. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.